coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Icon admits plans to move some production to China. Boom XB-1 Flight 10 hits Mach 0.95. FAA pauses new medical certification policy. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Icon admits plans to move some production to China. No surprise here, as the inevitable takeover of Icon becomes an international game. Icon aircraft will be moving a portion, with likely more to come, of its manufacturing to a new state-of-the-art facility in China, but will for now maintain its headquarters in Vacaville, California. Jason Huang will be stepping down as president and will transition into an advisory role with SG Investment America, the company that now owns Icon. Huang said as much in a Christmas message to the Icon Owners and Pilots Association. Taking over the helm as the new president of Icon Aircraft will be Lily Hu, who reportedly comes to the company with more than 17 years of executive leadership experience. The company will retain Jason Courtney as VP of Production and Noah Collins as VP of Marketing, Sales and Service. Huang said that the Icon A5 will remain the company's flagship product and that his advisory role will allow him to explore investment opportunities in general aviation, as well as potentially expand and diversify the Icon product line. Coming up after the break, FAA Greenlight SpaceX for Starship Test Flight 7. I'm currently using the Hartzell Talon, by far the best aerobatic propeller ever come out. I use the Trailblazer. It adds performance to the Super Decathlon and dependability, and it's rugged. Hartzell's been an excellent partner for Whip Air, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demand. It's helping us all have better performing airplanes. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. Looking for a new generation of proven and efficient aviation power plants that boast modern engineering, electronic ignition, and both direct and gear drive systems? With 100 horsepower to 240 horsepower, the Skyline and Redline engines offer uncommon value in an overpriced industry. Whether you are looking for fixed wing or rotor, MW Fly Americas has been established to service the American market with dedication and expertise. MWFlyAmericas.com Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. FAA Greenlight SpaceX for Starship Test Flight 7 The FAA recently issued a launch license for SpaceX's next Starship test flight. The final date is still TBD, though it's unlikely to occur in 2024 with only a couple weeks remaining in the year. Kevin Coleman, FAA Associate Administrator for Commercial Space Transportation, said, quote, The FAA continues to increase efficiencies in our licensing determination activities to meet the needs of the commercial space transportation industry, end quote. FAA publishes TFRs following mysterious drone sightings. Due to a continuous increase in mysterious drone sightings, the FAA has published 22 TFRs across New Jersey. Violations are subject to a wide variety of government punishment, including deadly force if necessary. The swarm of TFRs began on November 25th with FDC 48833 over Picatinny Arsenal. The Army installation is protected through December 26th. The most recent additions to the list are FDC 48986 over Bedminster near SBJ VOR DME, and FDC 48842 over Evesham near GXU Vortac. Bedminster is home to the Trump Golf Club. Congress approves new commercial drone restrictions. Congress has approved the 2024 National Defense Authorization Act. Within this legislation is the American Security Drone Act of 2023, which bars federal or federally backed groups from utilizing many drones manufactured in China or Russia. The decision stems from fears that foreign drone manufacturers could pose a threat to U.S. security. It was rumored that certain Chinese drones utilized their Wi-Fi capabilities to hack government facilities. Also, in 2022, an FBI investigation revealed that China's Huawei equipment could impair U.S. nuclear arsenal communications. USCG struggles with fleet crisis As its role in security and rescue continues to grow, the U.S. Coast Guard has finally decided it's time to make some serious aircraft operation changes. 
The kill shot was the recent chop in allowing total flight hours for the MH-60T helicopter fleet. The U.S. Coast Guard currently operates a fleet of around 200 aircraft. 45 of these are its primary workhorse helicopter, the Sikorsky MH-60T Jayhawk. Now all MH-60Ts with more than 19,000 flight hours are being grounded, reducing their planned service life by up to two years. That's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Boom XB-1 Flight 10 hits Mach 0.95. Boom's XB-1 took another step to achieving its goal of getting to airspeed Mach 1 in its latest Flight 10 on December 19. Chief Test Pilot Tristan Geppetto Brandenburg pushed the aircraft to a max altitude of 32,417 feet MSL and reached Mach 0.95, 553 knots true airspeed, in a 46-minute flight. The airspeed attained is further into the transonic regime than the aircraft has yet been. At XB-1 speed in this flight, it was flying faster than the cruise speed of a Boeing 737 or Airbus A380, which is about Mach 0.85. Its top altitude of 32,417 is near the altitude for the planned supersonic flight at 34,000 feet MSL. The flight team evaluated the aircraft's handling qualities at Mach 0.9, with the stability augmentation system off. The team also tested flutter points at Mach 0 0.85, 0 0.9, and 0.95 at varying altitudes to ensure the aircraft structure continues to behave as predicted as the flight envelope expands. In the remaining two flight tests, the dynamic pressure will be expanded to a higher level than will be experienced in XB-1's supersonic flight. Boom expects that one or two more flight tests will be performed to complete final system checks before XB-1's supersonic flight in early 2025. After these messages, FAA pauses new medical certification policy. of a new generation of the M-Class family. The M700 Fury. An aircraft worthy of the name and indomitable force. The M700 Fury transcends traditional limits with more power, blistering performance, a finely appointed interior, and the luxury of what matters most, time. Experience the Fury. Join the legacy. Welcome back. FAA pauses new medical certification policy. The FAA announced it's postponing implementation of a new medical certification policy that would classify medical certification applications with incomplete paperwork as denied, rather than deferred, as they were previously. Rather than January 1, 2025, the new policy will take effect on March 1, 2025. The FAA's decision comes after 14 aviation associations and unions voiced their strong concerns in a letter to federal air surgeon Susan Northrup on December 13. The new policy would have severe ramifications for pilots who would be required to report the denials on future medical applications, as well as employment forms. Categorizing medical certification applications that require additional information into the same bucket as applications denied for actual medical reasons is very misleading because of the significant likelihood that hiring managers would not be aware of this change in policy. The agency will hold a listening session with aviation associations in January 2025, and it intends to provide pilots with more information about the change in policy as well. We will continue to follow the issue and keep readers informed because we believe the agency should be utilizing a fair process to evaluate the fitness of pilots to fly. And that's our show for today. As we celebrate Christmas this week, we wanted to let you know that Aero News will be publishing at a slightly reduced level on December 24th and 25th. Airborne will also be taking a two-day break, but both Aero News and Airborne will be back in full swing on the 26th. Thanks for watching.